Hello and welcome, wherever you are in the world, to today's episode of Chairboys Live, as Wickham Wanderers head east to Carrow Road, taking on Norwich City. Norwich, of course, were a Premier League side last year and have started well this term in the Championship under manager Daniel Farker, picking up 10 points from six games. As we know, the Chairboys yet to get off the mark, uh, but recent performances suggest that fortune is going to turn very soon. We did really well at Reading on Tuesday, uh, performed very well against Millwall last weekend. Both those efforts went unrewarded and you just feel at some point there'll be a turning point. Will it come today? It would be a major surprise for many, I'm sure, if Wickham were to overturn the Canaries. But football, as we know, is a funny old game. In today's show, we have something rather different for you and there's some audience participation. There is a big quiz. Uh, all about Norwich City, Wickham Wanderers and connections between the two clubs. So get a pen and paper handy, uh, you'll need your thinking caps on and maybe uh, take the next few moments just to do a little bit of research and see what you can find out to give yourself the best chance of scoring 15 out of 15. We'll have the answers for you later on. Uh, we've also got a chat with Daryl Horgan. We had the pleasure of sitting down with him this week uh, to catch up with him for the first time since his international duty with the Republic of Ireland. Uh, so plenty of that to come. And uh, first up, this is a football show, so let's start with some football. Wickham headed slightly west to the Medeski Stadium on Tuesday night, taking on Reading for the first league meeting between the sides in around 20 years. Here's how it went. It comes across and towards goal he goes. Comfortable for Cabral. Not much going on in the area of Reading, it has to be said, but they've worked it nicely here. Kashkat. And that was Matt Bloomfield. Here comes the free kick. Headed clear. But struck back towards goal, well over the top. And here they are looking for a goal to take the lead at the Madstad. Here's Richards. Ajaria. Floated in dangerously on Mate. Should have been the opener. They can come wide for Ajaria. Who fancies his luck. been able to break down Wickham just yet tonight. That's a really good play from Xiao! Oh, it's a super goal from Lucas Xiao! And that is what he's all about. Their top scorer this season. He makes it six for the campaign overall. His third in the league. Six goals in six appearances in all competitions. What a start to this campaign for Lucas Yao. The touch, the turn, the finish. Fantastic, Reading in front. And it's a goal coming on 64 minutes. And they're still Wickham right in this. They've lost all five league games though this season. They've only scored once, conceded 13 goals now this campaign. In comes the delivery in towards Akin Fenwa, and then five back towards goal. It's to be that sinking feeling again for Wickham, although Rafael Cabral caught into action. Out of nothing, the strike came in. And Fred on your din map. I'd have just thought that he'd be bringing his side level here. It's a good save, really good, strong right palm. And to clear it away from danger too. So then for a second game running, we are wondering what if uh, and what might have been had Fredo Nudimma's late chances gone in. Uh, but let's put that behind us now. Look ahead to kick off today at Norwich. Three o'clock is the kickoff. Again, make sure you've got your iFollow pass for £10. Just buy that via the website. Nice and simple to make that purchase. And you can watch the game live with commentary from Bill Turnbull and Phil Catchpole. Now let's turn our attention to today's entertainment and it's a big quiz. So we've got 15 questions coming up for you. Now there is a theme linking each answer and that is that the first letter of the surname of the first question will be the first letter of the first name of the second question's answer. So for example, if the first answer was Gareth Ainsworth, the second answer could be Adams Park. 
Are you with me? It should make sense as we go along. So pen and papers at the ready. Let's make a start. This is the Wickham Wanderers uh, big quiz. We haven't got them up with a more inventive name than that, so we're going to stick with it. Um, ahead of today's game, Norwich City versus Wickham Wanderers. You can play along with your family. No cheating, of course. Um, no prizes, unfortunately, either. But just pride to, uh, to play for. Question number one. In September this year, a statue of which fictional TV character was erected in Norwich City Centre? Think about that one. Norwich City Centre, a fictional TV character, has been immortalised with a gold statue. But who would that have been? Next question then. Two men have managed Wickham and later gone on to manage Norwich. One was Martin O'Neill, but who was the other? So remember, you're taking the first letter of the surname of the first answer to form the first letter of the first name of this answer. Two men have managed Wickham and later gone on to manage Norwich. One was Martin O'Neill, but who was the second? Okay, we'll move on. Question number three. Which team knocked Norwich City out of this year's Carabao Cup? And if you don't know the answer, you may be able to glean a clue from your answer from the second question, of course. So which team knocked Norwich City out of this year's Carabao Cup? Take a guess if you don't know. Question number four. The Canaries goalkeeper starred in a World Cup quarter-final penalty shootout in 2014. It was quite a famous penalty shootout as well. What is his name? So Norwich City's goalkeeper starred in a World Cup quarter-final penalty shootout in 2014. What is his name? Now, if you didn't know the answer to number three, but you knew the answers to two and four, then those first letter clues might give you an indication. So we're four questions down. There are 15 in total. How are you getting on? Do chat away with other fans in the, uh, in the chat on the right-hand side of the screen. But don't give away any answers. Keep these to yourself. No cheating. No conferring. Question number five, which former Wickham striker moved to Norwich in 1995, playing 25 times in two seasons before returning to Adams Park? Which former Wickham striker moved to Norwich in 95, he played 25 times in two seasons and then returned to Adams Park? Now he didn't move straight from Wickham to Norwich, he went via another club or two, but he was a former Wickham striker, he signed for Norwich in 95 and came back to Adams Park. And remember, the clues are linked. So the answer to the previous question, take the first letter of the surname, apply it to the first name of this question, and that might help you along the way. Next question. Amongst Norwich's famous fans is an author, actor, and quiz show host, and a former director of Norwich City. What is his name? So you're looking for a famous Norwich City fan who is an author, actor, and quiz show host who was also a former director of the club, what is his name? So we're coming up to half time in the quiz. The next question, in which competition did the two teams meet for the first time ever in 1994? So the first ever game between Wickham Wanderers and Norwich City came in 1994, it was here at Adams Park, but in which competition was that game played? How are you getting on? I hope my clues made sense in terms of the first letter of the surname, first letter of the first name. So here, you're taking the first letter of the surname of the previous answer and applying it to the first word of the competition. Moving on. What is the name of Norwich City's home ground? That one's quite straightforward. I may have even referenced it earlier in the show. Which means if you were stuck on some of the previous clues, you might be able to piece them together as we go along. What is the name of Norwich City's home ground? Next question. Don't forget you can pause as we go along. If you need more time to think, just hit that pause button and you can catch up later. Which defender, who is currently a League One manager, played for both clubs with a spell at Peterborough United in between? Which defender, currently a League One manager, played for both clubs with a spell at Peterborough United in between? So have a think. You're thinking of a former Wickham and Norwich player currently managing in League One. Question number 10. Norwich's right back is the cousin of a Wickham Wanderers loanee from last season. 
What is the Norwich player's name? Norwich City's right back is the cousin of a Wickham Wanderers loanee from last season, the promotion winning season. What is that Norwich player's name? Think back to which loanees we had last season, in the first half of the season. Question 11. Who scored Wickham's third goal in the 4 3 defeat to Norwich in the League Cup here in September 2018? For those of you who have seen it, the highlights have been up on iFollow just yesterday. Wickham scored three goals in a 4 3 defeat. Who scored the third? It was a close range goal. Don't forget to link your answers. First name of the surname forms the first letter of the first name of the next answer. Next question, which Wickham player, which current Wickham player, left Norwich City's academy last season? So which member of the Wickham Wanderers squad was at Norwich City in their academy last season? And is therefore returning to his former ground in today's game. We're approaching the finale. Going to move on to the next question. Which Wickham player started his career with Norwich's closest rivals? Which member of the current Wickham squad started his career with Norwich's closest, biggest and fiercest rivals? We've got two questions left. Without looking, Wickham's next away game after this is against which championship side? After today's game, what is Wickham's next away game? Who are the opposition? And finally, Question number 15. Which BT Sport pundit scored both goals for the Canaries in the 1994 meeting between these two sides that we referenced earlier? So which BT Sport pundit, regularly on the TV, very opinionated, scored both goals for Norwich City when these two teams met here in 1994? 15 questions there then. Don't forget you can pause, you can rewind if you missed any of them. And remember the connections between the answers how did you get on? Let's find out afterwards. First of all, we're going to take a little break. This week we caught up with Daryl Horgan, who did so well for the Republic of Ireland in their two games a couple of weeks ago against Wales and Finland. He signed for us in the summer and we took a little bit more time to get to know Wickham's new number 17. Here's how our chat went. Darrell, we have to start by talking about uh, you representing the Republic of Ireland. You were the first Wickham Wanderers player to do so, uh, to represent the country for three years. What did it mean to you to get the call up? Uh, look, every time to play for your country is unbelievable. Um, it was probably something I thought might have been a bit out of reach for me. You know, I hadn't been in a squad for nearly two years and, um, you know, I was in the provisional, but the previous one, same as the last one, but never got the, the call in and obviously there was a couple of COVID related issues and thankfully got in. I knew the manager and I suppose when I got in I tried to show what I could do, what he what I'd played with him before and um, thankfully I got in and got to play in both games. Yeah, the two games were really close weren't they and you must be disappointed ultimately with the outcome of the games but on, on a personal note to put on the green shirt and represent the team must have been a proud moment. Yeah, on a personal note it was incredible, you know, my um, first competitive start. Um, so that was that was amazing, but uh, you know the games were were frustrating. You know, played well. I felt them both games, especially the Welsh one, but just just didn't put the ball in the net, and you know we got punished. Got punished by Finland, and really should have probably won both games. Who were the teams that you admired and, and sort of supported growing up? I mean, I was growing up. It was uh, Leeds, Leeds, because they had kind of a, a really good contingent of good Irish players. And I just uh, I loved watching them, and um, for, kind of when they kind of started dropping the leads, I started stopped following kind of individual teams and more kind of keep looking at what Irish players were doing, and uh, you know teams that I enjoyed watching. And uh, which were the players you kind of looked up to as, as role models? Um, uh, Damien Duff and Robbie Keane were the, were the two really. Um, obviously, you know they played right at the highest level, being Irish, and you know one Duff obviously won Premier Leagues, Robbie Keane. Scored a ridiculous amount of goals. They were just they were incredible players. You obviously made a big impression over in Ireland, and it was really at Dundalk, wasn't it? Playing under Stephen Kenny that, that made a name for yourself and, and gave you the opportunity to move to England. Yeah, yeah, we had a, we had a 
incredible three years at Dundalk, you know, won the league three times, played in the Europa League, a couple of cups. Um, there was a, a whirlwind three years almost, it was incredible. Um, uh, we're going to move on to some fan questions. Uh, we had a lot that came in over social media. But you don't do social media yourself, though, do you? No, it is. It is. Not for me. I don't like to be accessible <laughs> to the world, and I don't need someone to. I don't. If I want to know what you think, I can ask you. I don't need someone to just tell me. And uh, people, if they want to know what I think, they can just ask me. Because <laughs> I don't. I don't. No one listen to my opinion either. Totally fair. Um, I, I envy you. Um, <laughs> question from Ethan: Who's the best player you've played with and against? With and against. Sh- Seamus Coleman. You know, he, he was, he's brilliant, like, unbelievable player. Inc- incredible engine. Um, unbelievable. I've never seen any, like, he's playing at the top of the game, and I've never seen anyone have a, a game where you've gone, which is a shame, it's had a tough day today. You know, he, his energy, his ability to get forward, his deliveries, his, and then as a guy, an incredible guy and as a leader and obviously the captain in Ireland and everything like he as that kind of the stature of a man he's just he's a, he's a brilliant brilliant guy and an unbelievable player when we put the the, uh, the appeal out of questions it came back quite regularly how does Damien Duff feel about you stealing his face you must get this a lot <laughs> the likelihood the likeness between the two of you uh, is that something that gets commented on a lot yeah quite a bit quite a bit if the uh, like likeness of bank accounts would be all right too, <laughs> I'd say he. I'd say he's probably heard it a lot less than I've heard it. To be honest with you, I don't think anyone says you look like Daryl Horgan. <laughs> Sit away around usually. Uh, this is quite a niche question, and I hope it makes sense to you. But it's from Ryan Connolly. Is Supermax all it's cracked up to be? Yes. Yes, it is. What is Supermax? Supermax is a little fast food restaurant, kind of mainly in Galway, but it's dotted around Ireland as well. Pff, unbelievable. Unbelievable. The one at Air Square. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, Marmite, love it or hate it? That's from Tracy. Uh, no interest in it. No interest? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. You're in the 1% of the population that doesn't have a strong opinion on Marmite. No comment. Uh, a, a more serious question from Callum. How have you found settling into what is a very close-knit squad here? And are there any particular players that have kind of taken you under the wing and that you've bonded closely with already? Uh, settled in very easily. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really good group. Really good guys. Um, you know, from the outside in, you can see that there's a great kind of close knit, great kind of atmosphere, spirit among the players. But you come into it, it really is, it really is like that. Sometimes you see on the outside and it's different, but it's a great group. Um, and to be honest, uh, everyone's everyone's made me feel really welcome, looked after me. Everyone's easy to chat to. You know, there's no there's no one I go, oh, geez, I'm stuck around my head or something. Everyone has their own different personalities, their own interests, their own different things, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great group and, you know, that has shown why they've gone up the leagues and that'll be a key factor for us this year as well. Uh, some of these questions are hard, some of them are like this. Cats or dogs? Cats. Do you own any pets? Don't do pets. Don't do pets, don't do social media, you're very, very chilled out about Yeah, that. that's, well, that's the point then, I don't <laughs> need it, I don't need any extra stresses on me. You do kids though? Yeah, two and another on route. Hard work? Sometimes. Sometimes good though. Brilliant, the best thing, best thing you'll ever do. Football fans? At the minute, the little one's only, she's only one, so okay. she doesn't really know, but the little man's five, he loves her. He loves her. Um, he misses, he misses coming to the games big time, because he'd always go to home games and quite a few of the away ones as well. But uh, yeah, he misses, he misses the football big time. What is one country you'd love to visit? Probably America. The, West Coast, but on the East Coast. If you say New Orleans, you might get a pay rise as well. <laughs> oh, Louisiana, of course. Of course. <laughs> and finally from Chris, who's the funniest teammate you've got here at Wickham? It's a, uh, the big man's funny. When he gets in, he's a, he's a funny character. Like he's, uh, well, there's quite a few characters around the place. Nick Freeman, a funny guy. Very dry sense of humour. Never know if he's telling the truth or not. Silly things, stupid things. Is it true that Guinness over here doesn't compare to Guinness over here? Not even close. Nowhere near it. Waste of time over here. Get everyone to Ireland, have a Guinness.
Thank you very much to Daryl Horgan for joining us this week then and taking the time to sit down and chat to us. Uh, we'll have more similar interviews like that coming up in future shows. Uh, but for now, let's turn our attentions back to the quiz and you'll want to know the answers. Um, so return to your pen and paper, give yourselves a tick for the correct answers and we'll rattle through them. In September this year, a statue of which fictional TV character was erected in Norwich City Centre? It was, of course, aha, Mr. Alan Partridge. A gold statue, I believe, in September. For all to see. Question number two. Two men have managed Wickham and later gone on to manage Norwich. One was Martin O'Neill. Who was the other? So we're taking the P from Partridge, sticking it on the start. The first name of Paul Lambert, who of course is now managing just down the road from Norwich, Ipswich. Question number three. Which team knocked Norwich out of this year's Carabao Cup? So if you didn't know it, you could take a punt, taking the L from Lambert and applying it to Luton Town. It was a 3-1 win for the Hatters over Norwich in the very first game of the season. Question number four. Norwich's goalkeeper starred in a World Cup quarter-final penalty shootout in 2014. What is his name? It is, of course, Tim Krul. Uh, that was famous for the fact he substituted, uh, he replaced the original goalkeeper, Jasper Sillison, in the last minute of extra time. Uh, Sillison not very happy, if I recall, at being hauled off to allow Krul to come on and face the penalties. But Tim Krul was the Holland hero that night. Question number five, which former Wickham striker moved to Norwich in 95 and came back to Adams Park at a later point? That was, of course, Keith Scott. And amongst Norwich's famous fans is an author, actor and quiz show host and former director of the club. That is, of course, Mr Stephen Fry, very famous Norwich City supporter. Next question, in which competition did the two teams meet for the first time in 1994? That was the FA Cup, Wickham reaching the third round that year and losing 2-0 here at Adams Park. What is the name of Norwich City's home ground? That was the easiest question of the lot, surely. That's Carrow Road. Which defender, currently a League One manager, played for both clubs with a spell at Peterborough in between? That is Russell Martin. Russell was here, moved on to Peterborough, and then joined Norwich as a League One club. They won successive promotions under Paul Lambert to reach the Premier League, and Russell went on to uh, captain the side, play for Scotland, and is now the manager uh, in North Buckinghamshire. Norwich's right back is the cousin of a Wickham Wanderers loanee from last season. What is the player's name? Well, our loanee was Rolando Ahrens, and Wickham will be coming up against his cousin Max Ahrens this afternoon. Question 11 Who scored Wickham's third goal in the 4 3 defeat to Norwich two seasons ago? It was Adebayo Akin Fenwa. Uh, Jordan Rhodes smashed a hat trick past us that day. Paris Cowan Hall, Sam Saunders, and the Beast himself were on the score sheet for Wickham. So remember, you'd taken the A from Aaron's, applied it to Adebayo. And then, of course, we're looking for another A then in the next dance. So which Wickham player left Norwich's academy last season? Anis Mehmeti, who's uh, done really well for Wickham in his two appearances so far, and I'm sure would love to get on the pitch against the Canaries this afternoon. Which Wickham player started his career with Norwich's closest rivals? Mr Wickham, Matt Bloomfield, played one game for Ipswich Town before signing for Wickham back in 2003. Without looking, Wickham's next away game after this is at Birmingham City. And the final question then, which BT Sport pundit scored both goals for Norwich in that 1994 meeting we referenced earlier? That's Chris Sutton, um, who uh, yeah, just proved too hot to handle that day. So how did you get on? Leave your, uh, your answers in the comments. Um, no cheating, no lying, of course. Let other Wickham fans know how you get on. And we'll have more of these quizzes in future episodes of Chair Boys Live. Um, that's all we've got for you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you also to Daryl for his time. Um, make sure you get your iFollow pass. It costs £10 to watch the full game. You've got commentary from Bill Turnbull and Phil Catchpole. Replays, graphics on screen, uh, a really quality production. And hopefully today is the day at Wickham Wanderers' fortunes turn and we can get something on the board, something to bring back to Adams Park when we take on Watford on Tuesday night and Sheffield Wednesday next Saturday. Thank you for now. Um, enjoy the game and we'll see you next time.